All right, so it's been buying 25 knots for the last couple of weeks and I've looked over a few of the comments. Yes, I've been heckled a couple of times about tying FG's boat review and all the rest of it. Um, the FG one, I definitely see a relevance to because even though I've, you know, you guys see how many guys I have on the boat, it still blows my mind how many of those guys aren't tying proper knots. Um, it's pretty simple for me. I get my scissors and I just snip it off. And it's a like, you get that. But the idea is you're putting yourself in a position to catch a fish for a lifetime. Um, I was on a boat once with Johnny Mitchell when he was guiding me when I was when I was super young and I tied my own loop knot onto a lure and he looked at me and he said, mate, is that not worth fish for a lifetime? And it kind of like stuck with me ever since. You know, you put so much time and effort into work and getting out there and finally you put in that cast, hook that fish of a lifetime and because you've tied a epoxy knot because your FG or your PR or something decent might have taken you 30 seconds longer to tie, you kind of had that she'll be right attitude and you've lost it. You hear that stuff all the time and, and on my boat it's, you know, I put myself in a position where anyone can catch that fish. So if I see someone with a dodgy knot, get snipped. So I'm going to give you guys a rundown on how I do it, how quickly you can do it. I can tie this knot in under a minute. So there's no excuses there for it taking too long. Probably the biggest thing is just going to be getting your head around the first step. And that's it. So let's get started. Um, we'll cover a couple of things while we're at it too. And as I do the stages, I'm going to give you a reason why. Everything in life should have a reason why. Um, if you're just doing something for the sake of it, you're never actually going to learn from it in a way. Uh, you should never just be casting at certain things just because, like, that's just going into zombie mode. You should be casting at certain areas for a reason. That way, when you catch a fish or you get a hookup, you learn why you've done that. Uh, so, on my boat, the only leader I have is 150 Pandera. Basically, it is a monofilament, which is coated, from, coated by fluorocarbon. So, you get that nice, soft, supple soft feeling of a mono leader but then you get the abrasive resistance of a fluorocarbon which is probably the most important part because of, you know we do a lot of reef species and whatnot um so 150 100 will, will do all my barra in the dam all my jigging all my flats if i slightly step up to say pe6 everything from then on is 150 really easy it's a no-brainer that one um Okay, so first step, what we're going to do is just make a loop. Now, there's no real crazy rules here. You don't have to get all technical. The loop is going to be, I don't know, that long. Put it against my body slightly before shoulders. I'd say that's going to be 30 centimeters. Then what we're going to do is we're going to... I'm right-handed too, so I don't know if that's going to make a difference. But basically, I'm just going to put that wrap that loop around my little finger and then I'm just going to grab these two fingers my pointy and my thumb that's going to go inside the loop and create a bit of a triangle now with this triangle and this knot the idea behind this is I can tie it anywhere at any time traveling to a mark you know if I get bust off and I'm even going to the next drift I can get a leader tied in that time I don't have to worry about getting there and tying a leader while the other people are fishing, I can tie it in the time that we get to the next drift. Time in water means fish. That's what we're going for. So you've got your little triangle. You'll see that if I, if I go one more loop more, that's too small. If I go one less around my thumb, you can't grab it, like it's super awkward. So you'll see, there's no real rule to it, it's basically you just want a nice little even triangle. Now you get your leader, and this is a part that starts to get a little bit important. Uh, length of leader, let's say a finger, that's a good one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go with the leader underneath. So I've tried to wear black and got a black background so you can actually see, hopefully, what it does. But all I do is I go underneath 
So in and under, and I can kind of do this without looking because it's just like second nature now. And this is what I hope you guys get out of it. But I'm gonna go underneath and I'm just gonna twist my left hand. Basically my right hand does nothing. And as I twist my left hand and I'm just plaiting, so right hand doesn't move. I'm just going under like that. As I do it, I'm just switching sides. And as I'm switching sides, you'll see that I'm pushing with the braid against my fingers. So what that's doing is actually tightening my FG as I'm going. So you get this extremely tight, neat FG from the start. And you'll hear a million things about like, oh, you know, you gotta do 20 loops, you gotta do 30 loops, you gotta do, what I'll do at the end of the uh, end of this knot is I'll do a knot that's say 30 twists long. And what you'll see is at the base of the knot, it actually won't tighten up. So the problem with that is you've got this ginormous big FG knot. The whole base of it hasn't actually tightened up because the finger trap part, which is how the knot works, grabs from the start and doesn't allow the back of it to grab. To me, the ideal amount of twists is anywhere from 12 to 15. You're getting a nice small knot, and with that small knot, it goes through your guides nicely. Everything about it works well, and all of your little twists grab. So anywhere from 12 to 15, perfect. All right, so I hope this isn't painful to watch, but I'm gonna do each part twice. That way you just get a proper understanding. Loop, round the pinky, triangle. Grab your leader, underneath. So I've gone under, then my right hand is gonna stay just still, and my left hand is basically just gonna twist. And that's all I'm doing, just going backwards and forwards. And you can't, this is where people get muddled up and it doesn't make sense to me, because they say, how do you know which way to twist? Well, I can't twist like that and then twist again. That's just weird. Don't do that, don't be that guy. You're just gonna go twist, and you can only twist your wrist one way. So that's all you're gonna do. And you're just plaiting, under, through, twist it. You're just plaiting the braid onto the leader. All right, so we've done that part twice. Now, you're just gonna pinch it, hold it nice and tight, pull your two bits of braid out, you got your tag end, you're just gonna put, so this is where you're half hitching. So I've got my braid and my leader next to each other. And it can fall down like that, that's fine, it's no biggie. But you're just gonna go half hitch. Now, I use my teeth, but I don't actually pull tight because I like my teeth. I'll use my hand like that to pull it tight. So if you don't have teeth, Sorry, this knot might not work for you, but probably need to go to the dentist and sort that out. We've just got our one hitch on there. Now that one hitch is gonna hold my knot from now on. Then all we need to do is another three hitches. So you're just gonna go four hitches. Everyone talks about doing alternative hitches or they just have to be hitches. The hitches have nothing to do with the actual knot itself. The hitches are basically just there to hold that part tight. We're just going to do three more though. So one and we're just hitching the same way. Nothing crazy about it. Two. Three. Now we've got that section there. Now we're going to pull that tight. Now all we're going to do is finish off the actual braid itself. So it's called a risotto finish to super, super easy. Make a loop on your braid. And this is where it's up to you. You can do three, you can do four, you can do five, you can do six. Doesn't really matter. You're just gonna do half hitches and one big half hitch. So that braid's just gonna go inside its own loop and you're gonna pull it tight. For me, in learning, I have to do everything myself. So basically, 
I'm going to put on chess cam and if you want to copy, this is going to be the best way to copy exactly what's going to go on. Then after that, I'm going to tie this knot and we're going to see if we can do it in under a minute because that rules out the whole, oh, it's too hard, couldn't be bothered the whole lot. We're going to put that around the pinky and make a triangle. We're going to grab a finger length of leader. We're going to underneath, like we spoke about. And we're just going to use the left hand to twist. And, and you're basically twisting, and as you're twisting your wrist, you're going each side of your leader. And remember, we're only going to do this, say, 12 to 15 times. That's all we need to do. But something that I find super important about this way to tie the knot is with my right hand, I'm using my middle finger or I can use my index finger, doesn't matter, but I'm pinching it as I twist and I'm using my left hand to push the leader or push the braid tight and then I'm pinching the knot. Remember once we've done that, we can let everything go, we can straighten out our braid to make it a bit easier to hang on to. We're gonna tie that one little half hitch. And that half hitch is gonna go around the leader and the braid. And then we're just gonna pull that tight. And once I've done that, basically I can let the knot go. Don't have to hold anything tight anymore because that one half hitch is doing all the work for me. Then I just need to do that three more times. And that's it. Now just do my risotto finish. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. And that's what that should look like. It's pretty much four granny knots. We're gonna pull that tight. And that is our finished knot. So when it comes to the final knot, you, you're kind of judging yourself on time, convenience, being able to tie a knot wherever you like, whenever you like, in between spots, and doing it at a, a time which you can basically get it done between drifts. Then you look at knot strength and everything else to it. In my opinion, this is the best knot you could ever tie. Uh, there is quite a few ways to do it. And I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, like I explained before in the video. You may only take 10% of this knot and tweak yours with it. You may not use it at all. But just for those who aren't tying them yet, please look at all the time and effort you put into getting out there and chasing that fish for a lifetime, is it worth tying something sub to that? Not really. All right, let's do this. World's fastest FG. I'm gonna say start, so if you guys don't believe me, you can say start at home, then I'll say stop. You can match up the seconds at the end. Start. Loop around the pinky. Make the triangle underneath. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Pull them tight, four hitches. One, two, three, four. Not tight. Then one, two, three, four. Trim it up. Dodgy scissors. Oh, we're looking good. Done. Stop. 54. Would have been 53, but we had to actually press stop. Now... I'd love to actually not test that for you because there'll be some Jimmy who's like, you tied it too fast and it's obviously gonna fail. I don't know how I can try and test it. Hold on. I haven't moved, so. 
We're going to try and break it. I've got a rag. It's probably Jess's favorite rag. It's not breaking. <laughs> like, you can see it's tight. I'm not talking smack. Hope this helps. And try and beat it if you can.